Thank you very much for this uh, invitation. I would say that uh, probably all the slides that I will present have been already presented this morning, so you can continue to sleep. Um, <laughs> this is my, my first uh, point. The slides are not, no, okay. Uh, my disclosure, I have a lot, as you can see. Uh, another disclosure is the fact that this is a completely uh, arbitrary choice. Um, probably there are other drugs that will be in the future very useful in colorectal cancer. Um, and again, as I have already said, especially it is uh, redundant with the great talk of Dr. Guillermo Argiles, which was very, very great. Uh, so first of all, I would say that more and more, and we have seen a lot of slides about that, we are moving to personalized medicine in metastatic colorectal cancer. Even if, if it is not for 50% of the patients, we see more and more a way to find alterations, such as this one with CTDNA assays that has been presented in 2018 at, uh, at uh, ASCO. And you can see, for instance, that we, we can find some fusions, uh, genes uh, that are very important in terms of carcinogenesis in colorectal cancer. And now we know that the consequence of that is activity of some drugs. This one has been presented by Eric Van Kutzem a few uh, minutes ago. And uh, for instance, laotrectinib is able to uh, work, as you can see, in a refractory metastatic colorectal cancer. When you, it was, this drug was evaluated, it was possible to obtain very, very nice objective responses, and this is, this is especially this drug uh, on track fusion, and this is the other drug is entractinib, uh, that is entractinib that is working uh, a little bit larger on uh, different uh, fusion uh, genes. So this is, we are moving more and more in this field of personalized medicine, and I am quite sure, I can promise you that this drug will appear on the market, and we will have to look for this kind of fusion gene, because in these patients, this personalized medicine is working. This is a very small percentage, but this is something that is interesting, and we have to do that for our patients. Uh, if not, they are lacking some chance of, of efficacy. About uh, immunotherapy and current, current cancer, again, it has been done. Uh, the presentation of Guillermo Argiles was very uh, complete uh, this morning. We know that when we take all patients with MSS current cancer, it does not work very well as a maintenance, as it was in the module uh, study, evaluating the role of uh, atezolizumab in maintenance therapy in combination with 5-FU and bevacizumab. And in later lines, when we tried in this trial, Joanna Bendel tried to make some excitation of the, of the, of the cells with cobimetinib uh, to try to in, increase the, the antigen load and then to give atezolizumab. And the first results were very positive. The final results of the trial are negative, the phase three trial. So it remains clearly the, the major problem to find something that could work in this field of immunotherapy. It works a little bit in MSS colon cancer as it was proven by, by this, as it was suggested, but proven by, suggested by this, uh, this trial combining durvalumab and tremilimumab. In comparison with best supportive care, you can see it is working a little bit uh, in terms of overall survival. The fact is that even it works, this is so expensive with a so small difference that we cannot consider that it could be uh, the standard of care for our patients in the future. And there was no effect in progression-free survival, but a little effect you can see in terms of response rate. So it means that we, we have to continue to work in this field and to improve a little bit our results. And for that reason, either combination of monalizumab, for instance, or their regorafenib plus nivolumab that has been already uh, discussed this morning is something that is very, very interesting because it seems that this kind of combination uh, Guilhem, I was, I was telling that your, your talk was great. So you, was, you were not in the room, but I, I, I have said that. I, I have the proof, so congratulations. Um, so um, this combination of regorafenib and nivolumab is, is clearly very, very interesting because you can see in very refractory current cancer with low doses 
80 milligram of oregorafenib, so in terms of uh, side effect, it's not too much, no, no major problems. You can see long-lasting uh, responses, and the very, I would say that this is very, very promising data, this combination of multi-target with part of anti-angiogenic effect and uh, immunotherapy in terms of overall survival. It has been. Another thing that has been presented by Guillem this morning is all this uh, uh, affair, I would say, with uh, uh, B-specific antibodies. These B-specific bispecific antibodies are very interesting because they are able either to work in this field of immune therapy with a, um, a target there on the tumoral cell, another there on the T cell, so putting together the T cells and the, the target cell, and then uh, giving an action uh, for, for the, the immunotherapy. So this is something that is very interesting. As a bispecific antigen are very interesting too, because they are able to fight again two targets on the same cell, two uh, cellular targets, and it could be something that is very interesting in the future. Uh, Already presented too. Uh, this is a, um, a presentation phase one of Joseph Tabernero uh, two years ago. Uh, this bispecific antibody CEA uh, CD3 uh, TCB is very interesting on the paper, I would say, uh, because it is linking the T cell to the CEA target, and then immunotherapy at ezolizumab uh, could could work. The fact is that this uh, compound is a little bit more toxic that it has been uh, evaluated at the beginning. So we continue to work on this kind of compounds to uh, uh, give us the opportunity to use them without any major uh, side effect. And you can see it was already working on this, uh, on this uh, presentation. And it is clearly impossible to be there on this podium uh, without speaking about a new standard of care. And this new standard of care uh, has been given this morning. So you can see I make pictures during the, the talk. So it, uh, and then I put that in my slide. So what work, I would say. Because there was an embargo, so I was unable to get the slides before. So we have seen uh, Scott Coppets presenting these data that are very, very interesting, evaluating the role of triplet therapy of oncorafenib, binimetimnib plus cetuximab, doublet therapy, oncorafenib cetuximab versus a control arm of folfiri cetuximab or irinotecan cetuximab in a BRAF mutant metastatic colorectal cancer with disease progression after one or two prior regimen. The results are clearly uh, positive, especially when you compare the triplet combination versus a control with an increase of the median survival from uh, five to uh, nine months, and the hazard ratio is very, very low, 0.52. So this is clearly very, very important data, and clearly this is a, a future change in our clinical practice, in our standard of care. And this was working in all the subgroups it has been, uh, as it has been uh, already presented. The triplet regimen is, seems to work in terms of response rate a little bit more than the doublet regimen. And clearly, this combination, as, as I already said, is probably the new standard of care for, for this patient. Another way that is probably interesting, I would say, is the fact that we could have in the future drugs that are working on uh, targets that we know for a long period of, of time, but that remain at this time completely untargetable. And it could be the case for Keras mutation, because we have seen uh, during this ASCO meeting uh, the, the results of this uh, first in human study design, design with this drug, AMG510. Uh, this drug is an anti Keras uh, mutation, and it is working uh, in uh, non small cell lung cancer. You can see a good response in refractory non small cell lung cancer on this slide. But it seems to work a little bit, not so much, but it could be interesting, I would say, to continue to work with this compound in combination with other drugs, uh, maybe, uh, because it is working a little bit also in colorectal cancer, as you can see. 
with quite a long, long duration of response. I do not want to go into the detail. So I came to my conclusion. So probably I am a little bit, I did it a little bit short, but I think it's, uh, I, save, uh, I saved time. So I am probably wrong, but, and probably there will be other drugs coming in this field of metastatic colorectal cancer that we even don't know at this time. So, uh, but I am quite sure that in the future, Encorafeni plus Binimitinib will be used in the treatment of BRAF mutant metastatic colorectal cancer. I am sure also that we will continue to use personalized medicine, larotrectinib, antrectinib, in very, very specific patients with fusion gene that we will have to detect in our patients. And after that, I am quite sure, I don't know exactly what will be in the future the best combination with immune therapy that is able to transform MSI colorectal cancer in, in, in a MSS colorectal cancer in MSI colorectal cancer in, in, with new sensitivity to immune therapy, maybe uh, nivolumab plus regorafenib, maybe uh, monalizumab, I don't know, but there are more and more results that are very promising in this field. Bispecific antibodies are another possibility, but again, it's a problem of toxicity that, that is not easy to, to solve. Um, it has been presented this morning too that CAR T cell could be in the future something that could be used uh, in, in solid tumor and especially in metastatic colorectal cancer. We, uh, our colleague hematologists are using CAR T cells in the treatment of leukemia and lymphoma at this time. So it could be, it's very difficult, it's very expensive, but we will see. And what is interesting too is the fact that we are seeing each year new weapons on new target or old targets that are coming and all that is very interesting for the future of our patient. Thank you very much.